we're into a new week of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig and well and truly in the run home with only 11 games left in our regional league in Nordos season. Today two of our tough ones coming up in the rest of the season away from home against 6th place Kimi Leipzig in a local derby before taking on Elk Glenicki per and third. But we go into those games having suffered an injury to one of our starters in a friendly. He's out for three months with a torn hamstring. Not ideal. <laughs> Welcome to episode 6 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today as I said in the intro. Two of our tougher games left in the remainder of the season, only 11 games left in the season these days. We travel away to take on both 6th place Kimi Leipzig in our second Leipzig derby of the season. Off the back of that, we take on Alk Glenicki, albeit that game is still two weeks away. So if you are looking forward to that in today's episode, as well as a look at the preview for this season's youth and take our first one here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already now enjoying this new series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as mentioned in the intro, we have started to schedule some friendlies now that we are in the month of January, we have moved forward to January off the back of the episode at the end of last week where we did get some revenge against Energy Cop Bus. So if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. As you can see there, we did pick up a 13-0 win in that friendly, but it did come at a cost because as you can see through the team news already, so that's the reason we're going to bring this one up straight away. But Mike Saluski, our starting left back so far this season, he tore his hamstring in that game is out for somewhere between seven weeks to three months. To be fair, this is the half of the season you would prefer an injury like that to happen, because if we go and have a look at the schedule, this is the part of the season where the games are a lot more spaced out, only one game every two weeks at this point, so it does mean he will miss less football, having got that injury in this part of the season as compared to the first part of the season, but still. Not ideal. It does mean now that Linus Simmer is our only out and out left back in the squad, so he'll get some game time over the next couple of months, albeit in terms of actual games, it might not actually be that many. But just recapping the results off the back of that last episode last week, where we did beat Energy Cop Bus and Chemnitz. So to be fair, we were taking on teams all down in the bottom half of the table, and we started off well beating Grievesveld 7 1 at home. This one very comprehensive victory, very happy with that one. Off the back a little bit trickier away from home against Halber start this result a little bit iffy, especially against the team who are second bottom in the league, but thankfully Ziani did grab an early goal, didn't grab a cushion, but thankfully did hold on to pick up three more points than we took on the team at home, who are rock bottom of the regional league in Nordost in Lichtenberg. This one was a bit more comprehensive, albeit took us a long time in the first half to grab that opening goal, but from there, off the back of that one, two Ilzeta, Ziani and Pitlicka scored goals in the second half, and we did pick up a 3-0 win then. We did drop points for the first time in quite a while. This was against Misselwitz away from home. We did have to come back from 1-0 down early in the second half to grab a one all draw. It was, in fact, Linus Zimmer off of the bench, I believe, in this game. It was for Saluski having picked up a yellow card. He actually scored a really good goal. So we are going to show this one to you guys. A quick look at the stats from this game before we do show you this goal score by our young wing back, who of course now will get a lot more game time with that injury to Saluski. As you can see, a little bit of a disappointing result, especially because in terms of statistics, like most of the games that we have played since that episode at the end of last week, we were well and truly the better team. But this goal, especially for his first one of the season, was an absolute screamer. He gets the ball here from Don Brava. A fair way back, starts to cut in field, is just outside the box, and just loops that one into the top right corner. And thankfully he did that, otherwise we would have lost that game, and that would have allowed Energy Cop Bus to close that gap on us back to six points. With that in mind, the fact that we did pick up a point, it was closed back down 
to seven points. But then in the next match week, we took on Victoria 1889 at home and thankfully picked up a rather comfortable 2-1 when they did grab one goal back late in the 89th minute. But thankfully, a little bit of a case of too little too late after Ziani and Weigel did pick up goals earlier. And on that same match day for the first time in that most recent stretch since we have played them, Energy Cottbus, they actually suffered a defeat. So despite the fact that we did draw that game against Muscle Bits, we have actually extended our lead on top of the league table out to 10 points leading into these next two games. As I said, two of our tougher ones in the run home, albeit teams that we have beaten so far. We may have taken them on earlier in the season. First up, Kimi Leipzig in a Leipzig derby. We beat these guys 3-0 the first time that we did play them, albeit that was at home away from home. This one could be a little bit trickier and they are doing a decent job up in sixth on the league table, but hopefully we can pick up a win, albeit probably looking for an improved performance compared to our last couple where we have just been a little bit scratchy. And off the back of that, the tougher game you would think in today's episode, we take on Elk Deniki, currently third on the league table, another team who we did beat earlier in the season, also by a scoreline of three goals nil. So based on those earlier season results, you would like to think we can pick up six points from today's episode, but with these two games being away from home and with our recent form not quite being quite as good as you would hope considering the teams that we have been playing against, at least in terms of winning margin, we have still been picking up points, but not quite in the fashion you would expect. We could be potentially in line here for some more drop points, but hopefully that is not the case. And hopefully Energy Coppice as well will continue to slip up a little bit off the back of losing the last game. But before we do get stuck into these two games, in today's episode, obviously we caught you guys up on that injury to Saluski, but as well as that, we have had our youth intake preview here at Locomotive Leipzig. So we'll show that to you guys, look at our youth candidates for this upcoming season. Apparently, it is going to be an excellent youth intake, albeit, as you can see, even though the screen for some reason is cutting it off slightly at the top, the ratings for the players that we are going to get through aren't that great. The best ratings that we do have are for goalkeeper fullbacks and for attacking midfielders. And apart from that, the ratings aren't that great. So I'm not expecting an overly good youth intake, albeit being in the fourth tier of German football. There is a chance that it could actually be a good youth intake just because our current squad probably not that good compared to the youngsters that we could get coming through. But our youth intake, according to the right-hand side, will be excellent. But on the left-hand side, based on the ratings, it does look like that could be a bit of a lie. But we might come back for that youth intake maybe in tomorrow's episode. We'll see how we go when the next interesting games are coming up in the run home for this season. But that youth intake will take place at some stage in March. Of course, in this series, youth intakes could be quite important, especially compared to the previous Juniorman save. We didn't really spend enough time at a single club for the youth intakes to make much difference. And also, seeing as we are in January, we have been trying to renew a few contracts in our squad. There you can see now the star rating has just popped up ever so slightly now that I was about to exit this screen. But going over to the squad and looking at the contract situation, as you can see, a lot of players with contracts expiring at the end of this season. We have renewed some of the ones who have quite high potential, but there are some as well who I would like to renew, just haven't been able to yet because their demands are a little bit more than what we can afford here at Locomotive Leipzig, in particular Lucas Search, even though he's on £1,300 a week, which is our upper limit. He wants a bit of a pay rise, which we cannot afford. Also, more concerningly, Osman Atilgen, wants a significant pay rise. We can't afford that either. Of course, he's been really good for us on that left wing so far this season. And apart from that, the rest of the players who we have not offered contracts to, to be fair, own the OK players who might not hack it up in the free league if we do make it that far anyway. Also, Sasha Pfeffer could handle that rise up, but at that stage, we'll be 37 years old and paying him £1,500 a week. I think it might be time for us to try and move on from him potentially. But as you can see, Ziani, Eagleseta, Abdulamane, Zizek. We've got Heinke, Piplika, and Linus Simmer with contracts which they are going to sign, which will keep them at the club for a few more years. So I think that covers off everything that I have done off camera over the weekend. And we get stuck into the first of these two potentially tricky away games 
In today's episode, we'll come back shortly for the team sheets for a Leipzig derby away at Kemi Leipzig. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode of Leipzig Derby. There are Kimi Leipzig coming into this one in a bit of mixed form. Interesting addition in the defensive midfield there of Marx. He's quite a good midfielder who we previously had on trial here at our club. Might be someone to keep an eye out on in terms of us. As I said, Zimmer comes in for the injured Saluski. That does mean that Vufak makes his way onto the bench. But those are our only changes from our regular first choice 11. And hopefully we can do the double over our Leipzig rivals for this season. And we make our way forward to the 10 minute mark for the first highlight so far in this game. It's early days, but so far slightly edging things in terms of stats. We do get the ball back there rather soon off the back of that goal. Kicking Ziani, nice ball forward here for Ricardo Grimm. He has found some really good goal scoring touch over the last few episodes. Here's the central midfielder on attack and he grabs his seventh goal of the season. And that is exactly the start that we were looking for in games like this, which today could be a little bit tricky away from home if we don't assert ourselves early, but thankfully Ziani sets that one up nicely. Ricardo Grimm takes a touch to his left and buries that one in the bottom corner, and we go 1-0 up nice and early. And 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal, we now have a free kick in a dangerous area. Eagles header heads that one down, and Lucas Search gets on the end of it. It's an assist there for our centre-back to his fellow centre-back for his first goal of the season, and this is the perfect start 2-0 at the 20 minute mark, hopefully we can be solid defensively from this point forward search there. Actually somehow gets that past the goalkeeper, even though it goes right over the top of him. Definitely the goalkeeper there, if he stayed tall, might have been able to save that one, albeit it was a difficult ask at close range and we make it 2-0, albeit now Kimi Leipzig do look to do something off the back of the restart. They now look to play their way into our attacking zone. They play a ball over the top, but thankfully Eagle Zeta should tidy this one up. Plays that one back to Issa Dogan. Starts to go on a little bit of an adventure. We'll now pump it deep. And Ziani does get in behind. Big chance there, but unfortunately misses the target. But so far, well and truly on top. Turn up halfway through the first half. And inside the last five minutes of this first half, we do get one more highlight, a corner in our favor. Heinke there at the near post. Of course, he has scored a few of those in recent episodes, that one though does come off the crossbar and it does look like we will go into the sheds with a 2-0 lead. Actually, in terms of stats, Kimi Leipzig have offered a little bit in terms of attack, but obviously, as you can see through the XG, nowhere near as good as the chances that we have created. And we go into the sheds here with a nice little buffer of a 2-0 lead. As far as I can see, all our players out there are doing a decent job for now, so I think no substitutions needed, and we'll get things back underway with that 2-0 lead in this Leipzig derby. And about 10 minutes into the second half, we get the first highlight of it. We were on the attack there, but the Kimi Leipzig goalkeeper does claim that, tries to pump this one deep, but we do win that one back in the air, and Pfeffer here has the ball down the right-hand side. Ziani here from a tight angle does unleash a shot. That one comes off the crossbar. Would have been some goal, that one, albeit was never much of a chance, but does go close but still 2-0 at the R mark in our favour. And we're just entering the last 20 minutes of this game now, still 2-0 up, nothing's happened apart from that shot early from Ziani, which did come off of the post, but I do feel like it's time here to bring some of our bench players on, so hopefully they can develop with a decent rating. In these last few minutes, all the ones who are not on a green rating can come off, so it means that Don Blomer comes on to left wing in place of Atilgen, Weigel for Abdulamane, Piplica for Henke, and also Vufak at right back, for Panzu Ernesto, there'll be four of our subs used with around about 20 minutes left, still 2-0 up. And we're making our way now inside the last 10 minutes, still nothing much has happened in the second half, but Ricardo Grimm down to a red heart, we still have one substitution left, we might do something here a little bit interesting with no more midfielders on the bench, so because of that I think we're going to do a little bit of a shuffle up here and bring our best player left on the bench on the field in Kevin Zizek, that does mean that we will have to shuffle things around a little bit. Just going to have to figure out here where players do go for the last few minutes of this one. But I think we'll move Don Blubber to central midfield and Pfeffer out left. While Zizek can play out right his back up position. That's all our subs used. 10 minutes left. We still hold a two goal lead. And about to make our way into the last few minutes of this game. It's been a very quiet second half. But thankfully we grabbed those nice early goals through Ricardo Grimm. And through Lucas Search, and it does mean we're going to pick up yet again a pretty comfortable win 
in the local derby. As you can see, they actually picked up a few yellow cards throughout the course of that game. Also, the new signing in Marks did get injured during the second half, so maybe that signing won't be as good for them as I was expecting. But that second half, not up to much, but thankfully we grabbed two goals in the first, and that does mean we will continue to at least have a 10-point gap on top of the regional league in Nordos going to that second game of today's episode against Elk Glenicki, who are still in third position, as you can see. Unfortunately for us, Energy Cop Bus, they picked up a win, albeit that was very expected, as they did take on the Cellar Dwellers in Lukenvelda. But coming up next, we take on third-placed Elk Glenicki, and they come into this one off the back of a 2 all draw away from home against Victoria 1889. And we've gone for two weeks and we are back for the second game of today's episode. Today's opposition third placed Elk Leonecki. They are playing a traditional English 4-4-2 in Germany. Coming to this one in a decent patch of form, albeit we are in much better form, at least based on results. We're exactly the same as we were for that first game. And hopefully we can hold on to this 10-point gap, maybe even extend it over Energy Cop Bus for the run home and hopefully make our way up to the free leaguer come the end of the season. And just shot the 20 minute mark, we get our first highlight in this game. It is a free kick here to the opposition today. We are in the grey with the yellow shorts, which is actually a little bit of a colour clash, but I think we're going to be able to handle this one okay, albeit our players don't look like they are. They give the ball away there to the opposition. Of course, they are in our usual home uniform, so this one could be a little bit tricky on the eye, but thankfully, we do start to get on the front for a little bit now. Ziani, decent header back there. To a Tilgan starts to make his way into the opposition half yet again. Ricardo Grimm does get in behind, albeit this time puts that one over the bar. So that's the first chance of the game. As you can see, all the shots so far in our favour, but we are yet to hit the target, albeit off the back of that first highlight, another one does start, albeit a Tilgan there does lose out on the ball down that left hand side. So the opposition get a chance here. To clear their lines now, Grimm and lots of space outside the box. And he finds the back of the net yet again off the back of a Ziani assist. That one from a lot further out than we've seen over the past few games. And yet again, Ricardo Grimm is the first goal scorer and he puts us one nil up. Ziani here was being double marked. It looked like Grimm with a shot which goes near enough, actually, not really into that bottom left corner to be fair. The goalkeeper could have really been expected. To do better with that one, but we don't mind. We go 1-0 up with 20 minutes left in the first half. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal to Ricardo Grimm. We are now down the other end here in Elk Linicky. Do have a free kick. Thankfully, it looks like we are going to try and get rid of this one, albeit Heinke there with a very debatable option, albeit thankfully then Ernesto does make a block on a ball, which was looking like it was going to be played right into the center of the box. And we get it back. We pump that one deep, albeit now out Glenicky. Do get it back, but good work there again. I believe that was from Ricardo Grimm. We get a chance here on the counter attack. A Tilgan makes his way inside the box. Tight angle, unfortunately, that shot straight at the goalkeeper. But so far, all the highlights pretty much in our favor. And with 10 minutes left in the first half, we are still 1 0 up. And that was it for the first half of this one. We take a 1 0 lead thanks to our only shot on target through Ricardo Grimm. It was from a fair way out to be fair. As I said, the goalkeeper maybe you'd expect to do better, but thankfully, even though Al Glenicki less chances but with more shots on target, we do still have a 1 0 lead. We did pick up some yellow cards though late in that first half, so I think because of that, we are going to make some changes here at half time. Vuvak can come on for Ernesto and also. We'll give Kevin Zizek some time up front, seeing as Ziani did pick up a late yellow card in that half, but those will be our only two changes at the moment, playing fairly well, albeit a few more shots on target would be ideal, so we can grab a cushion goal and make sure that we do pick up three more points here away from home. And 10 minutes into the second half, no highlights just yet, but yet again, one of our players has picked up a yellow card at Tilgan, to be fair, not doing that well today, so we'll take him off and bring on Don Glover. For these last 35 minutes, still with a 1-0 lead. And just shy of the hour, mate, we do get our first highlight here of the second half. It's a corner in our favour, and FIFA picks out Heinke at the near post. As we said in the first game, he is starting to score a lot more from these corners with his head, and that is the cushion goal that we were after. It's probably going to come back anyway and make a substitution at this time, because as you can see, Eagle Zeta has picked up a yellow card, so off the back of that goal, he can go off 
for David Urban, but that is the cushion goal that we have been looking for. 2 0 with a half hour left. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game is our last stoppage, and we have one substitution left. Leon Heinke, the second goal scorer, he has gone down to a red heart, so Pitlicka will come on for him with our last substitution. Should be good though for all three points. 2 0 up with 15 minutes left. And we are into the last five minutes of this game, looking for a third goal here from a free kick. Not too sure who got the head on the end of that one, but unfortunately it goes wide and into the side lane. But as you can see, we have been well on top in this game, albeit shots on target actually a bit more even than the other stats. But thankfully, we just do enough to pick up two goals, one to Ricardo Grimm in that first half, who will no doubt get the Man of the Match award with that 7.7 .7 average rating. And also from a corner, Heinke in the second half. And it does mean we do pick up two wins from what did look like our toughest games left in the remainder of this season, at least in quick succession anyway. So those are two very good results. And it should mean at least we do hold on to a 10-point gap over Energy Cop Bus, depending on what they did on the same match day. And as you can see there, four down, they pick up a very good result against Cal Zeiss. You know, those guys have fallen down the table a little bit since we played them last week. Now in seventh, they suffer a 4-0 defeat. But really, even though there are still nine games left in the season, it does look like a two-horse race for the title. But we are well and truly in pole position. Ten points clear off the back of two wins in today's episode, including a 2-0 one there over Elk Glenicky. And back in the inbox off the back of those two games in today's episode, as I said, two good wins there by scorelines of 2-0 over both Kimi Leipzig as well as Elk Leonicki. And it does mean that we are now still 10 points clear of Energy Cop Bus. But these days, with only nine games left in the season, so it's always a good situation when the points gap is bigger than the games remaining. And it does look like even with nine games left in the season, it is a two-horse race, probably a bit too much ground for the likes of Elk Leonicki and Burliner to be making up to try and get promoted to the free league, and based on the fact we have only lost one game so far this season, you'd like to think we won't drop too many more if we do it all, and we can make our way up to the free league for the second season of the save, and as I said at the end of last week, that might also be the point where we do turn professional, also just notice there in the inbox, the agent of Ricardo Grimm does want a better deal for his client, we might ask the agent, it's behind my head, but we'll ask that Ricardo Grimm does sack his agent. We'll tell him we're not convinced he's doing the best by him. And thankfully, Ricardo has listened to us. So his agent or his past agent can go and get stuff. So it does mean that Ricardo Grimm does not have to be offered a new contract. That is very useful because his current contract does go through for a few more years. Yet, as you can see, he has sacked the agent who looks to get the very best deal for both himself and his client. And instead, has hired an agent who does like his clients to remain at their current club. So I do think that does work out in our favour. Of course, Ricardo Grimm finding some really good form, as I said, in that central midfield role. And with that four-star potential at 23 years old, definitely a player who should be good for us in the free league, as long as we don't bottle things in these last nine games of the season. But I think that will do it for today's episode. Two big wins there away from home, including... In a Leipzig derby, if you enjoyed this one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back, I'll just try and find some games which do look interesting around the run home. Our last game of the season is probably now our toughest one remaining, that double header Kawasai Jena, even though they have dropped down the table a little bit since we last took them on, as well as Shemnitzer, albeit now that I say that, those guys also have really fallen down the table since we did take them on at the end of last week. But just having a look at the table position of the teams that we are taking on soon, I think next up, we might come back in late March. By that stage, we should have our youth intakes. We can do an update on that. And also, we've got Bubblesburg, who are sixth in the league at home. Look in Velda. I think that's a game that we can skip over. And then BFC Dynamo, one of the favourites for this division in the preseason. I think those are two interesting games that we can come back for. And if things go well in between now and then, we could potentially 
wrap up the title in one of those games. So I think we'll come back there for those two games at the end of both March and April and see if we can wrap up the free league title or if it will go down to the last three games of the season. So until then, for those two games, plus, of course, our first youth intake here at Locomotive Leipzig. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Don't know how I ended